All right, guys. Got all my sanding done to get the glue off, so I'm going to practice what I preach in this build video. Um, a lot of this is going to be a lot of basic stuff uh, that a lot of you builders out there already know. So, uh, you know, bear with me a little bit here, but I'm going to try and cover this build from start to finish. Now, I've got my sanding done on my vertical. I've got my sanding done inside the channel. All paint's been removed. All glue's been removed. So what I have here is a paper towel. Half of it is dry. This half here, we have dry. This half here is mixed uh, just with 50% warm water, 50% alcohol, just a one and one And uh, basically all I'm gonna do is come through and just wipe my surfaces that I just sanded, get all that off of there. That is just dust waiting to uh, adhere to the uh, epoxy and keep you from getting a good true bond. So get all that off nice and gentle. Try and stay away from the painted areas. Like I said, I don't know what paint they used. So I want to be careful where my alcohol touches. Um, so far from the little test area I did, it didn't look like the alcohol was going to remove it. So I'm not too worried about it. Now you'll notice right here, why didn't I take the paint off of this? Um, this part actually sits outside. Um, and it is not glued down. It does not come all the way down. There's actually a little bit of spacing in between that area there. That's part of the design uh, of the J10. So uh, got it ready to go. Um, I did do a little bit more research on the control horns. Told you guys, yeah, I'm not happy with all these new ARVs and the way they're hooking these things up. Now, one thing about the Wings Makers models is uh, quality is unbelievable. Um, other kits out there could learn so much from the way that Wings Makers uh, does their models. <clears throat> the foam is amazing EPO quality. I honestly, I've, I've never found a kit that has EPO like theirs is. It's very, it's, it's odd. You just have to go to your local hobby shop that carries uh, World's Models and Wings Makers brands and, and take a part out and feel it to know what I'm talking about. It's a totally different style EPO, very tough and rugged. Um, I noticed on the control hinges that I was worried about before, one thing, they didn't use cheesy white glue, super glue, tacky glue, anything like that. These are epoxied in. Um, and when I did, um, I have a really bright light over here. Let's see if I can boom, that way, guys. That you can't really see. It's on. It shines over my whole bench area. Um, but when this was held up to the light, one thing that makes me a little bit more confident is that each one of these has four very long pins that are epoxied all the way through the thick part of the vertical stabilizer. So that makes me feel a little bit better about not having a back plate. <clears throat> and like I said, on the vertical, if I lose it in flight on a delta wing, it's not gonna be an issue. It should fold straight with the airflow, um, kind of follow the airflow of the plane. It shouldn't be an issue if you were to lose that control surface. Now let me cover the wing real quick. Now on the wing guys, they did the same thing, okay? And I, I kind of realized why they did it, okay? This is the air show edition, okay? This is made to look good. And uh, I want it to look good, but I want it to fly better. Um, this isn't, you know, just gonna sit in my room and not get flown, I'm gonna fly this. Uh, so what they did, what they mainly did this change for, and it's, it's one of the few changes I've noticed, um, and all the other changes I've noticed have been for the better. They've really improved this kit um, is basically they put it here and not on the top just simply well, let me zoom out zoom out a little bit here so you guys can see okay just simply to keep that look okay that painted non obstructed look I, th I really think that's why they went with the epoxy uh, control hinges here but much like um, the rudder on this one you guys will be able to see it um, let me show you how it's set up here, okay? And I'm going to aim it up without even looking at where the control rod is, okay? There we go. Okay, right here, guys, okay? And I'll point it out. It might be hard to see on the cam. Right above that finger, you'll see a real light dot through the foam. And I do have a good light behind me, so you can see that. And right there is another one. So, not only, like I said, did they use a high-quality glue. This stuff is on there. I, I tried on the rudder. I, I can't pull it off. Now that doesn't mean it won't come off. Um, but they used a high quality glue and unlike most of the other kits I've seen to where it just glues onto the surface, this actually has pins that go through the foam and are epoxied through it. 
Now on this side, the reason I know it's epoxy through is because on one little area right in here, we kind of broke out a little bit, okay? And you'll notice right here, and I don't know if you can notice or not, I'll try and get a glare on it for you. There we go, there's almost a glare. Um, there's glue here, guys, and I can, you know, glue, I can, I can peel it off. I'm not going to right yet, but uh, it's there. So it's obvious that when they put these in, they put them in with those rods going in, and they're actually in there really good. Now, I haven't even worked this side yet um, on uh, all EPOs <clears throat> and all um, foam aircraft that you build. Guys, you really want to work. You really want to work your hinges. Um, usually, I'll sit down with a kit. I haven't even started and just work my hinges. This was very, very tight. Um, I sat here in between shots and uh, and was just sitting here doing this. Okay, you got you got to work those hinges. Um, when those hinges aren't worked, okay, it's working your servo harder. Uh, working your servo harder is going to be pulling more amps. It's going to draw more amps, um, and that's where you run into the issue I had. Okay. Now we'll go over this. Now this video is posted on, on my page, guys. It's the J10 thrust vector and crash video. Can't miss it. Um, I try to all the time and I don't. Um, go ahead and pick it up here and we'll get you guys a little, little example of what I'm talking about. Okay. Now I learned a mistake the hard way. Now here is, well, the only pieces that were what I considered semi-intact after my crash. Uh, I think I went into the ground at a little over, probably close to 110 to 120 miles an hour. Okay guys, um, when you do that, and it was on this exact jet, it just wasn't the Air Show Edition. It was the kit that I you know, built from scratch. Now, when you do that, bad things happen guys. Um, so you know, I was able to salvage some things. Uh, two things I was really happy I was able to salvage were the uh, Elevons off each one because I actually had these cut off and I used uh, CA hinges on them. So I saved those. Now, a couple other cool things, I'm glad I got the hatch uh, for the ducted fan. Never know, I could use that again, especially if I wanna put a larger fan in there. I can do a test cut out on this and see how it fits. Uh, the the, the tailorons, these go on the back. Um, these would go right about there guys okay um and the front um dorsal i'll just call them dorsals now sorry my mind's all over the place they go in right here i was able to salvage those um now one reason i'm glad i was able to salvage these is because on this one since i will not be doing a thrust vector setup i now i do have an rc lander on the next one i'm going to be building for you guys it'll go a lot faster and a lot smoother except when we get to this part um, I'll go through this part in great detail because a lot of people were asking about this on my last one. Um, when I do the RC Lander 70 millimeter uh, thrust vector system on this, um, I'll go into detail on how I do this. The best setup for it um, is performed amazingly. And as you can see, um, you know, these are kind of custom made and uh, they're built well. This was involved in that crash. This was on the back of that thing when it hit the ground at that speed and it is as smooth as can be. I mean, I still got all functions of it, not a single bent rod, and of course there's more to it, but it's put up. But in order to install this on the J10, the reason I'm not putting it on this one is because you have to cut, you can see a little line in the glare there, guys, right there, okay? That line right there is approximately your 70 millimeter line. Um, basically what I'd have to do is cut that completely off right there, and then I would be able to start working on putting the thrust vector on. So I'm going to do that on my other kit. And uh, we're going to call it good on my other kit. And um, I don't think I have them here. Or else I'd show you as I'm uh, rambling on. Actually, yeah, I did. Come on, grab them right here, guys. Down here in the local hobby shop in my house. I got pretty much anything I may need. Okay, here's the rest of the uh, thrust vector kit. <laughs> uh, sorry, this is embarrassing. All right, here's the rest of the Thrust Spectre kit, guys, off the other J10. And hey, check that video out and leave me some stupid comments. I deserve it because it was my stupid mistake that I lost that plane. Okay, so here's what we got. Make sure I got these lined up right. Should be a uh, recess. There we go. Okay, so we'll throw this on there. So that's how much that I had to remove from uh, the previous kit. 
and it looks like yeah it looks like it is if I line it up I'll get you guys lined up with me okay it's lined up right with that line now that line wasn't there on the older kits I think they added that in because they saw that these seem to be really popular for thrust vectoring and if you've ever flown this plane without thrust vectoring and you've flown a plane with thrust vectoring the first thing you think of is this thing would be insane with a thrust vector kit so you know there's the other part there's my nice wooden ring I painted black um, from RC Lander and these are made with the holes already in them for the LEDs to come through for a thrust uh, um, an afterburner ring light so uh, you know that's set up and ready to go but I'm not gonna do that on here so the reason I'm glad I was able to salvage um, the front fins here is because I'm gonna try and do a setup and I've seen it I've been on the forum and seen how it's done of making these into functional canards okay forward and backwards alright now if I can run this and set this up with functional canards there will be no reason whatsoever for thrust vectoring I'll be able to do 80 to 85 percent of what I can do thrust vectoring um, with the canards now the difference is with thrust vectoring guys now remember on how EDFs work okay with prop, prop planes you have your prop up here it's blowing air regardless if you're stalled or not so you'll have air flowing over your control surfaces okay now the biggest reason people lose these EDFs is because they stall you have zero control until you regain your heading your speed okay until there is airflow going over these surfaces which the power system will not provide it's blown this way it could care less about anything forward so until you get that airflow back over a stall is a is a bad thing in a larger EDF so why I said I can't do most everything I could do with the rest vector is because yeah I'll be able to pull off some insanely tight maneuvers which this thing actually does stock um, but things that I could do with my thrust vector on my other J10, such as hover, um, I had a 1200 watt system in it, pushing, you know, little, I think a little, pretty close to 2000 grams, about 1980 grams on a system that weighed 1300 grams. So uh, I had good thrust to weight, so I was able to hover, um, and I was able to hover and control a hover because I had a 360 degree nozzle. Without that nozzle, even with functioning canards. I'm not going to be able to do half the stuff I could do. So whether I'm going to take that little risk with this one or not, I don't know. I might just go ahead and buy another one of these air show kits that has nothing with it, just the body, basically a replacement frame, and just build my own from scratch. Um, there's plenty of room in here to hollow out and put in. This is actually a uh, 64 millimeter fan with a uh, 74 mil millimeter housing and a 76 millimeter lip. So. There's plenty of room in there, and there's plenty of foam in between that and the outside to get a 90 millimeter in there, I think. And if not, to put a solid 70 millimeter. So, uh, you know, I may do something like that. But, uh, yeah, that's the reason I keep the foam, guys. There's going to be a lot of parts on this plane internally, obviously not externally, that I will be using uh, I will be using the, uh, the foam that I saved on my uh, previously crashed J10. So uh, I'm going to get back to work here. I just wanted to cover the... Uh, uh, preparation for the uh, vertical okay and uh, basically the preparation of the vertical itself and the fact that I want to let you guys know that I did test those uh, control horns I got on there they are very strong on the wings makers kits these guys don't skimp um, I, I don't know how many people I preach this to but if you want an amazingly good quality kit and an unbelievable flyer you cannot go wrong with the J10 I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm not getting anything, guys. Trust, just, just trust me. If you believe any word I've ever said, these are amazing jets, especially for the price. Compare this to any other jet out there, and uh, get one of these and fly them. You'll never go back. There's a reason I have four of them. Well, three. We'll go over that some other time. But uh, all right, guys. I'm gonna get back to building. Find out my next steps. Go through with it. Um, there will be one hurdle we're gonna go through that. Um, I find to be the major flaw on this jet and uh, when we get to it I'll cover that but just as a preview I'll go ahead and show you what it is I won't even have to explain it um, go back over here to the hobby store all right and here's what we got here guys if I can get her all out 
the landing gear on these J10 are very weak, very, very weak, especially the front. Um, so what I did, now these have already been flown and these have already been tested and they survived some pounding. Um, this will mount amazingly, almost perfectly to the setup wing. Now these are from Hobby King. They're very rarely in stock, so if you guys get a chance to pick a set up, grab them, because they're hard to get a hold of. Okay, now this little piece of ply right here, okay, a little piece of plywood right there, guys, is where the stock landing gear mount. Okay, and of course they pitch, they pitch out this way, okay? You're looking front of the wing, back of the wing. So, <clears throat> with these landing gear right here, these are very strong EDF landing gear. Um, they are tensioned landing gear, okay? Right there, they got they got a good distance of travel of shock absorption, and they have an adjuster right here. You can make it very tight, or you can make it nice and loose. And they give you plenty of uh, ways with uh, putting loading it down with nuts in between everything to where you can put your own style of wheel on there uh, without any problem. I actually like the wheel that came stock simply because I'm pushing on this bad boy right here, and it is not spongy. I mean, this is a concrete foam wheel, and it is very light. So, back to what I was saying, right here, if you look at this, guys, we have almost got a perfect, perfect fit. I mean, it is so close. Trimming a little bit of foam. I mean, as far as length, lengthwise, it's an exact match. Um, the only problem is, you see that hangover? That's what I'm going to have to make up for. So, I'm just going to have to go in a little bit this way and eliminate some of that foam to mount this. Okay, now these nice little plastic mounts that I have on here, um, these are not going to stay. I'm currently in the process of machining some out. Um, I have just right here, um, these are just some aluminum plates. Okay, guys, um, got these, uh, just basically you can get these pretty much anywhere. Sell scrap aluminum, places you take your scrap aluminum to. Um, this is probably 030, 040 um, thickness, um, not real thick, very, very light. Matter of fact, I'll throw it on a scale here to show you guys. Okay, and this is the whole plate, and I'll be using just a little piece. The whole plate is only 26 grams, and guys, I'll be using a piece probably that big, so nothing at all, nothing that's gonna make a difference. And the uh, landing gear, 30 grams a piece, not a problem on a 4S system. So what I'll basically do, so I'll come in here, and I will trace that, cut that out, and leave that there, but I will go ahead, all six of those holes, I will go ahead and put through and screw into the aluminum first, and then screw in uh, to the uh, plywood part on the wing. So, like I said five times earlier, I'm gonna get back to work on this thing, and I'm gonna keep this thing going as a build. So I'll probably have it in a playlist, but I'll put the initial video up to let you guys know what's going on. And if you want to pay attention to it, um, you know, not a problem. If you get, and if you guys are looking for this plane and you cannot get a hold of it, um, definitely, definitely get a hold of me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm good buddies with uh, the guy, the uh, American distributors who sell this plane. Um, there's a lot of companies that, that carry it and sell it, but they all get it from one guy. And um, and uh, you know, I've talked to that guy. I talk to that guy quite a bit, so uh, I, go, I get fans and motors and all kinds of stuff that you can't get at these hobby stores from him, so uh, if you guys are having a hard time getting it, one of you guys really is serious about getting one of these, and you want me to get you one, um, just leave me a, a private message or an email or something like that, and I can definitely have one on your doorstep within about five to seven days. So uh, hit me up, guys, and uh, I'll get you taken care of. All right, so stay tuned. we got a lot coming.